The following program is video supplemental instruction. VSI is brought to you by the Teaching Center, UF's Learning Support Center, www.teachingcenter.ufl.edu. So for number 1a, we need to just factor a cubic equation. So remember that when you're factoring a cubic, such as this one, so we have x cubed minus 4x squared plus 6x minus 4, your objective at first should always be to see if you can factor it by grouping, because that will be the easiest. In this case, that won't work, because even if you try to factor each two terms, you're not going to get a common term to factor out. Um, it's not going to help you. In that case, the thing you have to turn to is synthetic division. Um, that's the simplest way. Uh, there, I mean, there's m multiple ways you could check it. It's definitely the simplest way, but just remember to figure out what you should be checking. Um, the only factors of something like this could be the positive or negative um, uh, quotients of the last term divided by the first coefficient. So, since we have negative 4 and 1 here, the only factors we could have are plus or minus 4, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 1. So I'm going to save some time here and just do the one that works. It ends up being 2 uh, as the 0 that, that works here. So remember for synthetic division, you put your coefficients um, in line here. You add downward and multiply each time. So if we do this here, you can see that we end up with 0 at the end. 0 remainder means 2 was a perfect 0 of that. Remember that this corresponds to the factor x minus 2. So that means x minus 2 is a factor of this quad, uh, cubic polynomial. And the rest is what's left here. So this corresponds to x squared minus 2x plus 2. So this is the factored form now of that cubic. And this, uh, this quadratic equation that's left does not factor any further. So that's the factorization. So now if we were to do the partial fraction decomposition of x plus 2 divided by our cubic polynomial, remember that for partial fraction decomposition, we're going to separate this into multiple fractions, uh, each one having the denominator of one of the factors of that. We only have two factors here, so we're going to have two fractions. We're going to have x minus 2 and uh, a fraction with the denominator of x squared minus 2x plus 2. So now we just need to think about what goes on the top. Well, remember that if you have a linear factor on your denominator, you're just going to have a constant on the top. So we'll put a here over x minus 2. If you have a quadratic expression that's not factorable in your denominator, your numerator has to be one degree less, meaning a degree one function. So we have to have bx plus c on top of that one. Be careful, because if you had something that was a quadratic that did factor, that means there's more things you could do and you could break it down further. So you only use the bx plus c if you have an unfactorable quadratic left in your denominator. For example, if you had something like x minus 2 squared, that also does not have a bx plus c factor or an ax plus b, whatever it may be. You only put a constant over that, even though that is squared, because it's factorable. So this is our answer here to part b. This is our partial fraction decomposition. And for part C, we need to actually determine the coefficients. So remember that to make these two sides of this equation equal, you need to get a common denominator here, which is simple because these were the two factors of that denominator in the first place, which means all you'd be doing is multiplying each one times the opposite denominator. And we know that that has to equal x plus 2. So if we write this all out here, we know that x plus 2 has to equal a times the quadratic denominator plus bx plus c times
times x minus 2. So that all has to equal x plus 2. And now we need to solve for a, b, and c. So there's a couple of different ways to do this. And the first thing you should always try in a situation like this is if it's possible to make some of those constants a, b, and c 0 by plugging in a particular value of x. That's always the best way to start. So you can see here, if you plug in 2 for x, this whole term would be 0. The only variable you would have left is a, and you could certainly solve for that. So let's plug in x equals 2. Over here we get 4. Here we have 4 minus 4 plus 2. And our term on the right is all 0. We can definitely solve for a here. This is 0 plus 2, 2a. Two 2a two equals 4 means a equals 2. So we have that right away. You can see since this is an unfactorable quadratic here, we couldn't do the same thing to then try to solve for b and c. So we're done with that method. The next thing that you could try, and you could do this from the beginning also, however, doing it this way, if it's possible, is usually easier and faster. The next thing that you have to do is, since you're trying to solve a potential, potentially like quadratic equation, and just see if it equals x plus 2, what you want to do is break it down into the x squared, the x, and the constant terms, or if you had a more complex uh, question, you know, it might be more terms than that, but you want to break it down into its polynomial constituents and just see what the coefficient of each of those terms are, because they have to match with the ones on the left. So first, let's go through this and see what x squared terms would come out of this if we factored it out, or if we expanded it. So you can see we'd have an ax squared if we distributed that a, and in this term here, if we foiled all this out, we would have bx squared. So we have an ax squared and a bx squared. So in other words, we have an a plus b coefficient on x squared. Let's see what we would get for the rest of them. For the constant, or sorry, for the x terms, we would have negative 2a if we distributed the a. Over here, we'd have a negative 2b and a c all on x. So we have a negative 2a, a negative 2b, and a c all uh, of x, so if we added all those together, of course, we'd get be minus 2b plus c x. And finally, what constant terms would we get? Well, we'd have 2a, and over here, the only constant term we would get is minus 2c. So we'd have 2a minus 2c as a constant term. So I like to put those in parentheses just so you know this is like all the constants together. So we have this coefficient of x squared, this coefficient of x, this coefficient of or that for the constants. So all of these have to match their counterparts on the left side. You can see here, we don't have an x squared over here. So that tells you that a plus b has to be 0. But if a plus b has to be 0 and we already knew that a is equal to 2, we definitely know then that b is equal to negative 2. And you can see here, we have 2, so we can certainly get the third one. Easiest one would be the constant. So we know that the total constant term, 2a minus 2c, has to equal the constant term over here, which is 2. Since we already know a equals 2, we get 4 minus 2c equals 2. That tells you that c is equal to 1. So we got all three of our coefficients. So the final thing would just be to write the actual partial fraction decomposition. Or actually, in this case, it just says what are a, b, and c. But if you wanted to write it, just make sure. It would be 2 over x minus 2 plus, and then we have negative 2x plus 1 over x squared minus 2x plus 2, plugging in for a, b, and c. So this sum of two fractions is the exact same thing as the, our original fraction. However, the purposes of this is that this is easier to integrate, and that's what we'll get to uh, in the rest of this problem. The Teaching Center, UF's Learning Support Center, www.teachingcenter.ufl.edu.